When it comes down to finding your ultimate metabolic zone, where your body is thriving the most in a ketogenic state, you have to look at something known as the GKI, the Glucose Ketone Index. It's a very simple formula, but it uncovers a lot about our bioindividuality. It helps us understand what works for us and what doesn't. What it does is it gives us an overall picture of where we are in a state of ketosis in relationship to our levels of glucose as well. In fact, it's a very simple ratio. It's basically just your ratio of glucose to ketones. But there's a simple way to measure it, and when you utilize the Keto Mojo meter, it can make your life a lot easier. I'm Thomas DeLauer with Keto Mojo, and we're going to break down the GKI and how you can use it to advance and optimize your life. Okay, so first things first, we have to look at how the GKI was overall developed and looked at. It was developed by a doctor named Dr. Thomas Seyfried. And what he did is he worked with cancer patients, particularly brain tumor patients, and he needed to find a way to determine where these patients would thrive and where they would have the best results when it came down to their level of ketones. But he also knew that if he just measured their ketone levels, that they would vary throughout the day. And if he just measured their glucose levels, those would vary throughout the day as well. The reason this was so important with brain tumor patients is because brain tumors, by and large, are usually glycolytic, which means they feed on the fermentable fuel, which is glucose. So he knew that if he could overall bring glucose levels down, that he would essentially starve these tumors. And he also knew that if he brought the non-fermentable fuel, ketones, up, that he could increase their quality of life while also starving these tumors. So it was very, very important to him. So there are a couple of studies that take a look at this in general. One study was published by the journal of the American College of Nutrition. Okay, it took a look at two pediatric patients with brain tumors. And essentially what it found was that when the GKI level was brought down, they would end up having a reduced level of the fuel that would feed these tumors. So in this case, fluorodeoxyglucose, which is basically glucose that gets metabolized in a certain way to ultimately be brain tumor fuel. So they found there was a significant reduction in the overall fuel that these tumors had when GKI was brought down. So on average between these patients, GKI came down from 27 all the way down to 0.7 to 1.1. So you wanna have your GKI nice and low. A low GKI indicates that you have low levels of blood sugar and moderately high levels of ketones. Now I'll explain exactly how it breaks down and how to calculate a little bit later in this video. There's another study that we wanna look at that was published in the journal Nutrition Metabolism. This study took a look at a different kind of cancer. This woman had a glioblastoma. So this is again, is still a brain tumor, but they all respond differently. So what they did with this patient is they had her go on an eight week ketogenic diet with mild calorie restriction. And of course, what they found is that her overall GKI came down from the mid 30s all the way down to about 1.4. Okay, so success. They brought the GKI down, which means they brought ketones up over the long haul and they brought glucose down over the long haul, not at just one specific point in time. Well, the interesting thing is they found that after eight weeks, that brain tumor reduced in size so much that it wasn't even detectable. And then when she went back on carbs and off the keto diet for about 10 weeks, the brain tumor reappeared and was detectable again. Okay, so what does this mean for you? If you don't have brain cancer, then is this important to you? Well, yeah, it is, because the science that has come from the cancer community regarding the GKI has opened up a whole world for performance, for overall life optimization, for overall cognitive function, because now we can take a look at the larger picture. Again, let me make some sense of this. When we test our ketones, it could change minute to minute because we're not a perfectly pressurized system where we have the fuel and the ketones running through our body at all the same rate, the same pressure. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Our liver produces ketones in these surges and then our blood surges. So we might measure ketones and they just give us random results, not random, but they might give us results that are within a realm, but not exactly the same over time. But if we start looking at the GKI, we can get a bigger picture of where something is working and where something is not. So I'll give you an example with exercise. Exercise is a perfect one because when you exercise, your glucose levels go up and your ketone levels may go up too, but more than likely your glucose levels are gonna go up and your ketone levels will stay about the same. This alarms people, but the fact is if you were to actually look at your GKI over the course of your entire workout, you would find that the overall net result of your workout is actually about the same as what it normally would be. You still have a good amount of ketones. 
But the other thing is, if you practice intermittent fasting, this could be very, very optimal for you. Simply because it's gonna let you know where you're burning the most fat, where you're getting the most metabolic effect. Because if your ketones are low while you're fasting, your glucose is high because of peripheral insulin resistance or whatever, you're not getting that much of a benefit. Your GKI is still staying high. If you want the effects of fasting, you want your GKI to be nice and low. So it's very, very powerful. Again, with the bioindividuality with food too. If you're concerned about eating something and it kicking you out of keto, well, you might eat something and it spikes your blood glucose, but you might find that your ketone levels don't change or they do actually go up too because you ate some fats. The GKI will give you peace of mind. It gives you that bigger picture and helps you find that metabolic zone. And very important. So how do you actually measure this with your keto mojo meter? Well, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna measure your glucose levels and then you're gonna divide your glucose levels by 18 and then you're gonna divide that number by your ketone levels. Okay, what this does is it takes your milligrams of deciliter glucose and turns it into millimoles per liter, and then you divide that by ketones and it gives you your simple glucose to ketone ratio. So you wanna be below a five, let's just put it there. If you're below a one on the GKI, you're in a therapeutic state of ketosis epilepsy, seizure treatment, uh, some cancer treatment, et cetera, et cetera. One to three, you're in a nice deep state of ketosis. This is great just for optimal ketone production and overall function. And then up to five, you're still in a moderate ketone range where you're doing pretty good overall. Once you get over nine, you're not in ketosis at all. So it's just a nicer way for us to look. It's almost comparative to looking at our A1C if you're diabetic. It gives you a bigger picture, which helps us out overall. And as the ketogenic community evolves and we start to learn more scientific ways to truly optimize our lives, we're gonna realize that it's more than just testing that one number. You can head on over to ketomojo.com and they have a way for you to enter your readings into their simple little GKI calculator and it's gonna give you everything you need to know when it comes down to what your GKI is at that point in time. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here with Keto Mojo. Leave that guesswork out of the equation and start being data-driven and utilize a Keto Mojo meter. I'll see you in the next video.